our understanding of their hope and aspiration, and a sincere willingness to help prepare them in every way for the responsibilities and opportunities of citizenship. Now, therefore, I submit to you, Mayor of the Township of Middletown and the Middletown, wait, Middletown Township Committee hereby proclaim May 18th through May 24th as Youth Week in Middletown Township and urge all Department of Government, Civic, Fraternal, and Patriotic Groups and our citizens generally, General Green, to participate wholeheartedly in its observance. We have a uh, no introduction of proposed ordinances this evening on the agenda. 
We have a consent agenda consisting of uh, resolution 14-144 through resolution number 14-152, um, uh, resolution number 14-143, the preventative bills be voted on separately along with resolution uh, number 14-153 will be voted on separately unless there are any other uh, uh, requests is the removal from the consent agenda. Okay, at this time may I have a motion of resolution 14 dash, uh, sorry, uh, re yeah, may I have a motion on consent agenda covering resolutions 14 dash 144 through resolution number 14 dash 152. So moved. Second. That was a second by uh, uh, committee committeeman Sharp for a second. Mayor Murray, Mayor Murray uh, <coughs> made the motion. Uh, on consent agenda, Adoption consent agenda, committee in Fiori? Yes. Committee in Massau? Yes. Committee in Sharpenberger? Yes. Deputy Mayor Santabrino? Yes. Mayor Murray? Yes. Okay, next vote uh, resolution number 14 143, <coughs> resolution authorizing payment of bills for May 19, 2014. We have a motion. So moved by Mayor Murray and uh, there's a second. seconded by uh, Committee in Sharpenberger. On the resolution, um, Committeeman Fiore? Yes. Committeeman Nassau? Yes. Committeeman Sharpenberger? Yes. Deputy Mayor Santabrino? Yes. And Mayor Murray? Yes. Now we have resolution 14-153, um, uh, resolution authorizing renewal of inactive Surfer surface liquors ink license number 1331-44-0003. Zero zero six. This resolution will be voted on by the governing body as the acting as the local ABC issuing authority. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Mayor Murray, seconded by Committeeman Sharpenberger. On resolution 14-153, Committeeman Fiore? Yes. Committeeman Massell? Yes. Committeeman Sharpenberger? Yes. Deputy Mayor Santabrino? Yes. And uh, Mayor Murray? Yes. Okay, resolution is adopted. The uh, next item on tonight's agenda is Township uh, Committee Comments. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go with Committee and Fury first this evening. Thank you, first order, Mayor, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. Just a few quick comments this evening. Um, first, good to see the uh, work already starting over in the uh, Ideal Beach area. Um, some uh, a lot of movement with uh, respect to the dunes and, and the flood replenishment project that will uh, take place in both North Middletown and uh, also uh, into Port Monmouth. So glad to see that progress is happening. Um, truly believe that the uh, federal project, which is many years in the making and uh, you know, so desperately has been so desperately and continues to be desperately needed here in the township that that project will um, pay dividends to, you know, uh, hopefully prevent um, any further catastrophic flooding during, um, you know, storm events. Obviously, storm events like we had uh, with Sandy, you know, notwithstanding, but, um, you know, I know there's always a lot of issues with, with regular storms, nor'easters, and tidal flooding that I believe this is going to go a long way uh, in uh, preventing. And uh, the only other comment there that I'll have this evening is um, just uh, looking forward to uh, celebrating uh, Memorial Day, remembering our troops and all those who have served this country so bravely and, and valiantly, protecting our freedoms and way of life, and our uh, current troops out there that continue to um, serve us so gallantly. And, Look forward to spending the afternoon um, with our veterans. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Just want to echo uh, community curies on Memorial Day. Um, it is a wonderful holiday to spend with family and friends, but um, you know, looking forward to honoring our, our troops and uh, our fallen soldiers. So, thank you. Dr. Schoenberg. Thank you. And I have a lot of pent up comments <laughs> from the last two weeks. Save them. Yeah. Sorry. 
And actually, a couple of uh, events of note uh, that I was lucky, lucky enough to attend, uh, the VFW had some, what's called a legacy event. And apparently this is something that uh, was uh, created in the 50s to sort of counteract the May Day movement. And uh, it's a great, great event. Uh, they, had, uh, they had veterans from all the wars, from World War II up to the Vietnam War, and there were even a couple of uh, Iraq War uh, veterans there. And uh, it's interesting, the day that they had it was about three or four days after the so-called May Day protest out in Seattle where uh, protesting involves breaking the windows of people's businesses. So it was really nice to see that spirit alive and well, uh, sort of counteract what tends to make the news all too often. Uh, then the day before, I attended the uh, 40th anniversary of a day of a uh, preschool called A Child's Place in Linkroft. And it was really interesting because it was 40 years old and there were actually parents with their kids who were now in the school who went there you know, 30, 40 years ago. So you had several generations. It was really uh, Abe Littenberg and his wife do a great job there. And it was really a great event and great turnout. Somebody came from Texas, I believe. So uh, you know, it's really nice to see those sort of roots still, still taking hold. Um, last Thursday night was the Reaching Out program. It's an annual event. Uh, run by the Middletown Drug and Alcohol Alliance. Great turnout. There had to be 300 people there, may I just say? Yeah. It was a packed house. And uh, it's uh, something that I've been doing for the past 10 years in various forms. And uh, it really is a great thing to see parents and kids. It's sort of a shame that we even need it. Uh, but the thought of looking at those fifth graders and thinking what's out there, it's better to have them forearmed uh, than to get mixed up with something because they don't, they're not aware of it. Um, and this past Sunday, the American Legion had their annual picnic for the Gold Star and Blue Star Mothers. And if you ever want to be humble, stand around some Gold Star Mothers. If you folks who don't know what Gold Star Mothers are, uh, they're mothers who lost a son or a daughter in uh, combat. And uh, the spirit and all they do, they raise money, uh, it's a support system for other Gold Star Mothers, and just a tremendous uh, outpouring of patriotism. I was so honored. I spent about three hours there, and it was I couldn't think of uh, couldn't think of a better way to spend three hours on a Sunday afternoon with those heroes. And from there, when they left already. I went to the Elks Car Show, uh, which was another great turnout. They had an even a better year than last year. And uh, just two other things, real quick. Um, there's a bill in the legislature in Trenton looking to legalize marijuana recreate for recreational use in the state of New Jersey. And I am, as a member of the Drug and Alcohol Alliance, I'm totally shocked that with the headlines screaming about heroin being an epidemic, that you would want to legalize the number one gate gateway drug. And I can tell you from experience with the Alliance that every person who comes through those doors, almost to a one, started out smoking pot and went on to oxycontin or methamphetamine or heroin or any of this other stupid stuff. So uh, it's unbelievable, and I'm hoping that uh, you know maybe we can even consider a resolution uh, supporting the governor who said he would never sign a bill as long as he's governor uh, to legalize recreational pot. It's not going to stop it, but it certainly will encourage it by having the government sanction it by making it legal. And uh, another thing, I uh, want. For once, the country made out, in my opinion anyway, where the Supreme Court um, came down in favor of prayer at public meetings, which I think is tremendous. Uh, it's, it's common sense, it's a no-brainer, and it's a reinforcement of our traditions. So it's really good to see the Supreme Court get it right the way they did. And their opinion, uh, the affirming opinion, was just tremendous. They knocked it out of the park. So I know we all like to complain about the courts uh, and some of their decisions, but it's good to give them a, a shout out when they do get it right. In my opinion, they did get it right. And I'll echo uh, committee man Fiore's comments about Ideal Beach. This has been a long time coming. I know we've gone down, uh, Mr. Fiore and I, several times uh, to uh, Washington and uh, hat in hand, begging for this. And it looks like it's finally coming through. So we're, we're really excited to have that, uh, that finally come to fruition. I think it's going to make a big difference with the next few storms. It, Hopefully they'll never come and never get tested. But if they do, we'll be ready. I think this is a really great step in that direction. And with that, let's hope for a nice sunny day on Memorial Day. It's a long parade, and we don't want to walk in the rain, not do we, folks?
So with that, thank you very much. So thank you, Mayor. Uh, I won't uh, repeat the, the comments as so eloquently uh, placed by uh, my uh, colleagues here on the committee with regard to uh, Memorial Day. It's, uh, it's an excellent day. Uh, we sh everyone should enjoy the time, but uh, the understanding of uh, why it is that, that we have that, uh, that ability to, to enjoy that day. Um, the other item that I have, uh, Mayor, uh, I want to thank you for um, uh, sending an invite, um, and I did attend the Breast Intentions um, sixth annual uh, gala in which uh, two uh, Middletown, uh, uh, two, uh, two Middletown uh, residents have raised over uh, close to a million dollars in America, I believe, um, in the uh, in the years uh, that the uh, that breast intentions is in place. Uh, I'll let the mayor expand upon that, but it was a, it was a great event. Um, I did attend with the mayor and the committeeman uh, Fury and Dr. Sharpenberg. And I won't make a comment that Dr. Sharpenberg did win not one, but two, uh, two, two baskets. Um, so with that being said, uh, thank you very much. That's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Uh, just, just, to, just to mention what you were talking about, the organization Breast Intentions was started by two kids in high school. So they started out by selling candy on the corner, and they've come this far in six years. Uh, a little bit older now, they're, they're young adults. Uh, but the work they've done is tremendous, um, helping uh, breast cancer survivors pay for basic things, uh, phone bills, food, grocery, co pays basic things um, that often get overlooked, um, you know, in, in a practical sense. So they, they've done a tremendous job and um, a very, very impressive uh, group of kids and uh, organization that's really supported them. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to be as brief as possible tonight. Um, one thing I did want to mention was um, I did go to the 25th annual MS Walk in Thompson. It's the 25th annual one. They raised $68,000 that weekend alone, which was very, very impressive. And I believe it was close to $2 million that weekend at similar events uh, throughout the county. So it was very impressive, real heroes of the cause, real champions, uh, great, great spirit. I also wanted to mention the police memorial we had last Friday on our lawn. Um, we honored our MTPD and their predecessors and the sacrifices of them as well as their families. Um, also, like to mention a workshop I had gone to. I, this is the second year I've been there. It's a women in government workshop, and they call girls from all different high schools throughout the county, and they meet all kinds of local women officials. And it, again, a very positive experience uh, for, for the young women and a very good event. Uh, set up by the League of Women Voters, as a matter of fact. Um, just going to wish everybody a safe and happy Memorial Day. Again, they say freedom isn't free for a reason. It isn't. Um, and it's very important that we keep in mind the real meaning of that day. So I hope everybody stays safe this weekend. And um, I'm going to move on to public comments. Yes, Ms. Bell. Um, Lynch Bell, 19 May Court. Uh, there was something on the agenda tonight regarding parking permits, and it just raised a few questions in my mind. Uh, what is the, the annual cost for the parking permit? The, the, do we know? $450. That's for the main, the do depends we, on the, uh, uh, the transit. That's for the main transit. Right. Do we do know what the daily lot is now? Is it six? Six. Okay. Um, the reason I asked about the daily lot is because well, since we raised that, I mean, like it went from five to six. I think it's been six for a while now, but that lot is very rarely filled now since we moved to six dollars. Um, you know, with the times that I'm guessing it. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if we kind of done a study of whether or not we um, maybe if we if that we lowered that by a dollar, we might fill the lot, maybe make a little bit more money by doing that. I don't know the answer to what to want, which is the better way to go. So I'm actually asking if it's actually really actually that lot uh, has seen an increase in. Um, in daily usage, um, I think trade ownership is down for people going and, and doing weekly and monthly passes. So I, I don't. I've taken that lot quite a bit, and it's always quite full. Um, I, I don't. I would actually say the daily lot. The, daily lot. Um, you know, I the other lot is actually a lot less. 
that in its domain is something to consider is actually lowering the price for the, the, the annual <coughs> as well. I mean, it's just something to consider because those lots used to be heavily, I used to park there and it was tough to find parking and as, as the prices have gone up, gone up uh, fewer and fewer. Um, it's, you know, it's much more empty. In any case, uh, to the other thing I wanted to ask you about is something I've asked about in the past um, many, many times at the Economic Development Forum last October. Uh, there was an announcement about a survey that was going to be released to businesses, and Dr. Scharfenberg, I followed up with you a few times about this. You mentioned that the Economic Development Committee would be meeting this month, um, and that you were finalizing the survey, so what's the status? As a matter of fact, we just met this past Tuesday, and um, the survey has been revised based on comments from the rest of the members of the Economic Development Committee, and uh, we're preparing it to be released probably within the next few weeks, but before the summer hits. Um, okay, also another question, this is probably from Mr. Severino. At the last meeting, there was some talk about, you know, what uh, stormwater runoff, and there's a new development, and some of the that are reviewed for that, and we talked about, um, you know, one of the things that I was wondering is whether or not, you know, if we're reviewing runoff, are we also giving consideration to the elimination of drainage area um, by the new development, by the land now actually being covered? Is that a consideration? And what's coming to my mind when I ask that question is Cher uh, Cherry Tree Village, which has increased flooding since Target was built. Are you speaking of anything specific, or are you asking a general? I'm asking if, when there's stormwater water runoff mm -hmm. uh, review, if consideration is given to the you know increased flooding that may be created by the land actually being built on. I can, I can, I can give you the uh, general answer with regard to our engineer and their review of uh, all planning board applications. Um, however, it. Essentially, there's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, our, our engineer and planning board um, and the zoning board reviews all, all the uh, engineering that's done in the application with regard to stormwater management. Um, and in, in short, uh, the, uh, there's not allowed, they're not permitted to be more water at a, at, at a higher rate placed into the storm system uh, than is current for that piece of undeveloped property. Uh, that, that, that is as that is as simplistic as I, as I can make, uh, and that is that, that's a that's a core understanding of what our engineer needs to do to review all the drainage and stormwater management calculations that are submitted. Key again is that by no means is the amount of water or the rate at which the water leaves the property to be increased, changed, or modified. Okay. So th does that answer your question? Uh, I guess so. There, there cannot be the, any the state law. Right. So the, the state, the state law, at least 15 times per year. So is it actually the increase of the flow of the site? Uh, the flow of the site after development cannot be more than 8% of the way. Well, under the 25 and 9 years from now. Okay. Reduction, they remain in development as a requirement to have a reduction of the flow of the site. Okay, I'm just, if that then a consideration, I guess I'm kind of wondering what it, created the problem. So Mr. Maloney's comment is actually more restrictive than I just noted in my comment. Yeah. The, the target development um, complies with those regulations, so I have not heard of any flooding problems in Cherry Street Village. The Palm Avenue. I talked to some of the residents there who said it's worse than Starks. They have and, and, you know, they give us a call. Tell them to give us a call and okay. we can look into it. But it wouldn't be a target. But there have always been flooding problems on Palm Avenue uh, and on the home door border there. That flooded for years, and that's a problem. I think Home Dose been trying to solve for a long time. All right, time. I'll mention that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public machine? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'd first like to say it's been a long time since I've been at a Township community meeting, and I just love the way each of you had something to say, especially about our troops. And Memorial Day, and I really appreciate it. Who is this? My topic, however, ma'am, just your name and address. I'm oh, sorry, Pauline Cavalier. Can I spell that? Please. 38 Savola Road. And I'd just like to verify um, a couple of things. 
before I make a statement and ask some questions. Am I correct when I say that uh, Trinity Hall, a 501c3 organization, if approved by the planning board, would not be paying taxes to Middletown Township? Is anyone on the board able to commit or able to answer that? That would depend. That's not necessarily correct. Even though it's 501c3? That is correct. For example, if you look at the for example, we have a pilot like Memorial Sloan Kettering, which is going in on exit 114. They have a pilot agreement for a portion of the property, but only up to five acres of the property is actually tax exempt under the tax law. So the remainder of the property is taxed at regular tax, taxable rates. Do you, as a committee, have the I'm same? I'm the township attorney. Sorry. Ah, Sorry. So, Mr. Nelson, do you have any information as to how much of that property uh, for Trinity Mall will be taxed? Or do I have to go to the planning board for that? Yeah. No, no one knows the answer to that. It's not really relevant to the planning board's decision. I mean, it's not a relevant issue for the planning board. My question really has to do with a private school that will be 501c3 designated and approved, and whether that school property will also contribute to the tax base here in Middletown as a resident. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good question, and I actually, that question's been raised, and we can't comment on the land use aspects of it, but I have asked that question, a similar question, not to respect to Trinity, but to uh, to our tax assessor. So take this for what it's worth, and I don't know if this applies for this specific um, application, because I don't know, but according to the tax assessor, Non-for-profits um, also, you know, obviously they are tax exempt, but there are legal exemptionary rules so that only a certain amount of property can be exempted per building. So to be candid with you, I don't know how many acres they're proposing because that's out of my jurisdiction, and I don't know how many buildings they're proposing. But there could be a ratio, according to the tax assessor, that if they don't have enough buildings per acre, then a portion, as Mr. Nelson said, may be taxable under that. So what I mean by it, and I ask the question, is a non-for-profit can't buy a 500-acre property and put one building on it and be tax-exempt. So I, I can't speak specifically, but it's not always the case, according to the tax assessor, depending on the application. So you might be able to get that answer at the planning board. Well, I'll try. That was a good start. Thank you very much. Um, am I also correct in um, believing that you, as a committee, appoint the planning board members? Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I'd appreciate it. Let me ask my questions, because I haven't been up here in a long time. And uh, any comments or questions that you might have, I'd appreciate once I'm finished. If Trinity Hall is given approval, how would road widening, if you know, additional land installation, in short, improvements to Chapel Hill Road, Kings Highway East, and surrounding roadways be funded. Who will pay for police to control and direct traffic, the flow of which is going to be very much increased when these improvements are being made? If Trinity Hall is given approval, how will I specifically as a neighbor be impacted? In other words, what guarantees or assurances can you, our elected officials, provide the residents of Stavola Road, Old Wagon Road, Woodgate Road, Peachwood Road, Edward Court, Arrowhead Court, Garryford Drive, and surrounding areas? What guarantee will you be able to give us that our quality of life will not be negatively impacted? Can you ensure that this non-property taxpaying private school, maybe, maybe. not for sure, with its school buildings, administration building, regulation-sized basketball gym, eight-lane competition pool, sports fields, massive utilities, and chapel, all of brick and mortar, covering approximately 37 acres at most, at the most recent reading, will not negatively affect our quality of life. Are you as a committee confident that this project, which is not sanctioned by the Bishop of the Trent Diocese, will not affect the real estate value of our homes. That it will not pose a danger to the children who currently live and play in this neighborhood. And that it will not create more noise, traffic, air pollution, and flooding. If you, 
as our elected representatives are unable to provide us, the directly affected taxpayers, with these assurances that our quality of life and life safety issues will not change, I believe you will need to direct your appointed planning board to reject this proposal. Ma'am, I'm so sorry. If you have a five minute limit, I'm going to let you finish your statement. I have one more minute. I'm, I'm going to let you finish your statement, and then I think it would be best if we just addressed it after the meeting. Stay, talk with us, do that. and we would be happy to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you. Will there be a lineup of cars in the morning and at dismissal directly in front of my house because the traffic at the proposed Chapel Hill entrance is too congested? <laughs> Will we as neighbors be subjected to evening and weekend noise arising from non-taxpaying private school activities and sporting events? Will you or your planning board foot the bill for each homeowner who will be required to dig yet more dry wells and or install more sump pumps on the properties of their homes because of the increased flooding problems resulting from the school's construction? And whoever said <coughs> run off before, we are right there at the bottom in that valley with that runoff. Will you or your appointed planning board accept responsibility for having sanctioned a school that in fact has so much community opposition? Are you not charged first and foremost with serving the residents of the I, I hate to cut you off here, but it, it, Mayor, if I may, okay. at, the, at the risk of, of saying anything that I'm not allowed to say, first and foremost, those are all planning questions, okay? Secondly, as a procedural process, while we do elect, I'm sorry, but we do appoint a planning board as the attorney and the task administrator can greatly uh, emphasize the reason that the planning board is appointed in a quasi-judicial matter is so that the governing body does not legally or ethically have influence on municipal, state, land use decisions. So to come up here, not I understand you. The zoning board also. Now, I understand and believe me, I feel your passion for this, but to saddle the township committee to lean on the planning board is not only unethical, but quite illegal. And that is why, that is why we have an appointed planning board, why we five, and you address us as having this responsibility, which I will never shirk a responsibility to the township or to the residents or to the love of Middletown that I have for you, your neighbors, and everyone else that makes up this great community. But to ask this about this board, to the subject that we have this responsibility and say that we're not potentially going to take action, it is not un only unethical for us to take action, it is illegal for us to take action. We have a representative, we have a designee, there's a designee, that, that's all well and good, but it's one of nine, okay? So you have to understand, we can't comment on the application, number one, nor can you have an expectation. And, and I feel your, I feel it, and believe me I do, and I, 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 I'm not on the planning board, but those are questions, those are all issues that need to be addressed at the planning board, but I just want to make sure that you don't have an unrealistic expectation based on your comments there, which I believe you do, for us to know you, you didn't hit a nerve. What you did is you hit something that's an unreasonable expectation, and I just want to make sure that the expectations are set, both legally and ethically, why that board is appointed at one member or two members per year. I appreciate your comments, I accept them, and I also would like to say that I know that Mr. Severino has recused himself from the planning board. And I okay. realized this is going on, but I did want this to come to the floor because we in our neighborhood feel very strongly about it. And that's what I want. We, we, we know. We know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public? Yes, ma'am. My name is Suzanne Bugby, and I live at 37 Bowl Road. And so my comments are also going to be about Trinity Hall. I'm not asking you to comment. I would just like you to listen to what I have to say. I am in opposition to having Trinity Hall built on the Conway property on Chapel Hill Road. It presents quality of life and life safety issues to the residents in Chapel Hill, in the Chapel Hill area, Kings Highway East areas, and just Bowl Road. 
I'm sure you've heard why the school presents life safety issues in the Chapel Hill Road area and these items. Again, I just found this out. Chapel Hill Road is one of the most dangerous roads in Middletown. The most accidents in the last three years at the intersection of Highway 35 and Chapel Hill and any other road in our township. But I'm going to discuss right now how this school will detrimentally affect Stabola Road and the same range uh, streets. First of all, part of Stabola Road and the impacts up to this Conway property. There is currently a paper street between 37 Stabola Road and 43 Stabola Road. According to Mr. Junko, the attorney for Trinity Hall, told me last at the last planning board meeting that it's Middletown's decision to open the street uh, to the school property and not his. This opening the street will create life safety issues and quality of life issues. Because the proposed academic building is very close, about 200 feet from the houses on Stavold Road and from this opening, this paper road, the backyards of houses on Stavold, students who can't park their cars on the school grounds will be parked on Stavola Road and walk to the school. Parents will drive there to drop students off. During athletic and performing arts events, there will be hundreds, one, two, maybe even 600 cars parked on Stavola Road and nearby streets. This presents uh, safety issues for the residents, children and adults who walk, jog, ride their bikes on the streets. The rural road is narrow and winding, so cars park there and a dangerous situation for those who live there. Life-saving vehicles such as first aid and fire trucks will have a difficult time getting through these narrow streets to help those in need. Second, our quality of life will be detrimentally changed. Loud noise and air pollution from the construction of the school and emergency entrance will change our quiet neighborhood. The construction site for many years with the roar of trucks and heavy materials and equipment in our backyards. Uh, Trinity Hall engineers mm -hmm. don't know what the noise uh, from the heating and air conditioning units uh, will be. Did you know that? It's, they're only allowed to go up to 50 decimals. But they've already acknowledged. They're just conjecturing that it won't exceed that. They don't know. Imagine having this in your backyard and hearing the hunt of rural heating and air conditioning units or a generator when used instead of hearing the birds as we do now. Third, there are already major water problems in our yards and homes that the New Jersey EPA, for some reason, doesn't want to consider because of the underground springs on the Conway property. The Marl Clay, you know, Marl Pit Hall, it's, it's named that because of the Marl Clay in our uh, town. Um, because of the underground springs on this property and the Marl Clay that is under the top layer of the ground, it causes runoff into our yards and homes when it rains because the ground is impervious to the water because of this moral play. We have water in our yards, basements, garages, crawl spaces, and we have pictures to document it. The construction of the buildings will disrupt the underground streams and, and, uh, and uh, springs and streams, even more creating worse problems for the homeowners. The water from their buildings run off, they've already said, will go into shallow wells. They're not going into retention basins. Therefore, it will end up into our house. Trinity Hall's proposed retention basins will not even address these problems, according to engineers that we've had. They're just a band-aid and excuse to get the planning board to okay their application. Fourth, their engineers said that each student and staff will use approximately 25 gallons of water per day. This is estimating 500 students, this is what they told us, at least 100 staff, plus maintenance people. Trinity Hall engineer doesn't know if the sewage pump pumping station can handle this. Five. The people from Trinity Hall are interlopers. Webster defines that as a person who becomes involved in a place or situation where, where they are not wanted or considered not to belong. Most of them live in towns other than Middletown, and they've already publicized in the newspaper that the current 30 students at their school located in Fort Hall come from 23 different towns. And they say that they want students from many different towns and many counties. This is Bumpy. Yes. We're, we're, up to the, we're over the five minute mark. Okay, can I just finish right here? This means, and again, we don't go tax wise, but this means that we've got these people coming into our town, changing.
taking our lives, and they're not even going to be contributing taxes because <coughs> this is a nonprofit. Um, and I'll talk to you I've lived here since 1956. My parents moved here in 56 from Northern Jersey. I love this town. I know you do too. That's why you give all your time to do this committee. So if there's anything you can do to help us keep this out of our town. I was an educator for 38 years and taught the very even. I respect the quality of a good education, but this school does not belong on this piece of property. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public wishing to speak? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Leo. You'll, you'll be next. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're up, Leo. You go for it. Leo Christophe, 121, uh, Cranberry Court, River Plaza, in Middletown. Uh, I have before me uh, resolution number 14 114 regarding your resolution dealing with the uh, returning energy tax receipts to the municipal government in Middletown. Um, I got this copy, actually two pages. Uh, happily, I found that uh, uh, Freehold uh, government got a hold of it, and that's where I got it, and I the same day I got it, I went to a freehold meeting uh, and uh, gave it to, uh, asked if it could be submitted as a record at the meeting, and I made a proposal that they fashion, craft a resolution to uh, invite voluntarily or compel by law all 53 municipalities, excluding, of course, uh, your, your government, uh, and uh, Freehold Borough, because uh, uh, John Griffiths, a member of the council in that borough, Freehold, uh, wrote a letter uh, about this same problem. And I spoke to him on the phone. Uh, he got somewhat even more inspired. Uh, uh, basically, I proposed to the uh, Freeholders that they uh, fashion a resolution or character a resolution to uh, have all the uh, uh, 53 uh, townships uh, put out a similar resolution and they agree to do it and I'll find out Thursday uh, at the meeting uh, that I'll go to uh, what's the uh, upshot of it. Um, uh, I also presented this uh, uh, this uh, information uh, that uh, these uh, tax receipts uh, at the uh, school board district meeting, I presented this to the president after the meeting, and I cited th 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 this document uh, and uh, basically told him that uh, these tax receipts through energy and business were originally collected and distributed within the municipality. The state took it over and they, uh, 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 the, the, the township uh, collected the money, uh, taxes, sent it to the state, and the state sent some of it back, and they kept some under the name of state aid. But that's a switch. He who controls the language and politics dictates the outcome of politics. That's all it is. It's just a, 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 a crafting of, of, of words. Uh, I also pointed out that uh, um, uh, we like to, uh, in Middletown, collect and distribute all these tax taxes, utility business taxes, and distribute them ourselves and send nothing to the state. Um, and I also pointed out to the uh, uh, school board uh, uh, in this district that uh, I read the passage that the uh, the the, uh, the diversion of this money by the state uh, deprived Middletown taxpayers of approximately 30 million dollars of tax revenue since 
21 up to 2013, and we have an additional five million dollars due to us from the state, uh, uh, five million dollars in 2014. So that runs a total of a total of 35 million dollars, and uh, so there's a, there, there's a, uh, a serious uh, problem, and I don't care what party's in office. Quite frankly, it doesn't change uh, any better if the numbers remain the same. Um, uh, so, I'll, uh, if you're interested, I'll get back to you uh, about this matter. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, you people to take seriously. I've said it before, and I'll repeat it. Um, you, uh, I would recommend that you start as you did with this. See, I got it. And I ran with it. You did, all right. Uh, and I went to two places, okay, uh, the, the Board of Ed and Freehold meetings, and I'll, I'll go back to, to all of them. Uh, you can start it now, okay, um, uh, they say uh, an oak, uh, uh, oak forests uh, come from one acorn, well, you know, give a million years, fine. Um, but uh, you start small, I would like to see a, a resolution crafted by this governing body to end binding arbitration in New Jersey. If it doesn't happen in New Jersey, it won't happen in Middletown, and they're robbing us blind. All right, I've talked to people who are business uh, yeah. uh, business administrators. We're over five me. minutes, Leo. Binding? We're over five minutes. What? We're over the five minutes. Am I over? Five yes, five but thank you. Well, you know my favorite song. <laughs> Only five minutes more. <laughs> <laughs> we can have that every meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to close up the 230 Chapel Hill. And I'm speaking about the Trinity Hall application. And uh, just a few reasons for the argument against the conditional use. And uh, we're doing a lot of studying, and you know, the concern is the traffic congestion. The slight distances from our driveway, which we mostly live in bicentennial homes, uh, compliance with the master plan, whether or not this proposed use is inherently beneficial to our local community, and it's not compatible with our neighborhood as it is an intensive use in a low density zone. Uh, to be more specific, the board seems the planning board seems to be more uh, seems to be easily satisfied with the applicant's submissions. This is even when we revealed that the environmental impact report was written by someone that has no environmental training or expertise. The same person who in the first line of questioning claimed he did not even authorize this report. Um, I know you're not all there, so <laughs> take, take your word for it. Um, one has to ask why the board satisfied, is satisfied with this. These numbers, tests, submissions, and claims have been proven Incorrect. Their traffic figures were sent back. They were not even accurate. They're not even accurate now, um, from what we have all found out. And secondly, I'd like to discuss the role of the planning board attorney playing, um, played and tone that he sets for the hearings. I do believe that this has overstep. He has overstep his boundaries, and he's not actively cross-examining the objective witnesses, but seeming he has no questions for the.
Um, I know that a few meetings ago, our water problems were discussed with you guys. I don't think it was that night. But I would on the record that my property does have a flooding problem. I'm very concerned about the property building the site, making that situation worse, exacerbating the situation. Um, and those who voted for Friday at the last workshop meeting. <coughs> so that was your husband? My husband? That was him? Yes, trying to use buckets. Um, I'd like to understand better what we trucks we have, if in fact this site is approved and if in fact it is highly likely to exacerbate the flooding situation all around the cola on every road in there. It, it's a huge problem and the water is very high. As I think you understand now, the foot on the foot, maybe two feet and you get water. We're all very concerned and having someone out now to assess the current situation. So I'd like to understand what happens when and if it's exacerbated by a property that's been approved by the planning board. Who's liable? Let, let, let me make a comment that's not specific to Trinity Hall. Again, that's, that's specific to reviews um, uh, by the planning board engineer uh, with regard to applications. And then the ability um, for the, um, the township not to grant the, the final approval, but for the engineer's approval of the, uh, of the calculations and what was, what was built. Uh, now, Mr. Mercantante will confirm that there is a bond uh, on a per project application that is issued. such that all the things that the applicants said that they were going to do based on the calculations that are done, were done. Um, and if they're, if, they're, if they're not done, they're, um, they're either not permitted to operate or permitted to operate on some type of restricted basis, but there is an enforcement wing to the, uh, to the engineer's review of the, of the application uh, on a per-application basis with regard to stormwater, specifically with regard to stormwater management. So, in short, if there is an application that is generating more um, more stormwater in excess of what was approved by the engineer, um, we have the ability uh, through uh, through through, uh, uh, through a bond to go back and require that it is fixed. So the applicant, the applicant and the poor the property owner is liable for making certain they comply with all the requirements of our planning board engineer and the stormwater uh, stormwater regulation. So the the the, the long answer to your question is the applicant the property owner is liable for meeting the requirements of what they said that they were going to do. Can I expect that bond to be held for perpetuity because construction is going to be going on? The, well, well the, way, the way bonds work is that uh, they, they don't get released until the project's finished. And then even after they're released, there's a two-year maintenance bond period after that. This, but, but if they decided to do like another phase or something in the future, that would be a whole different separate application. A separate bond would be imposed for that. So they're in place until all the work is completed, uh, inspected and approved. And then again, there's a two-year maintenance bond posted after that uh, in case there, there are any other issues. Uh, but those usually have to do with um, having not built it in accordance with the approved design plans. They build it in accordance with the uh, design plans, then um, there's not it, there's no reason to pursue bonds or, or any other action because it's, it's built as designed. And, then, and built as designed, it shouldn't have any uh, drainage impact on joining properties. I think it's a because if the design is flawed, then they call it the design. Well, yeah, you have to prove that the design is flawed. Just you saying so doesn't mean it's flawed. I mean, you'd have to prove it. And an engineer or somebody with the expertise would have to prove it. And that's just like any other lawsuit. You have to prove you're right and the other person's wrong. Uh, to sum up, what I did know, I just want to tell you you have 15 seconds. Okay, well, there's a question I have to answer, and then we'll get out to you guys. Um, I'm starting to understand the current status of the town center. So 
I'd like to understand from you guys where that stands right now. Or to it, well, it doesn't stand anywhere right now because the, there was a, a years of litigation. Um, ultimately, there was a, a, a decision in favor of the applicant. Um, but by the time that that happened, the economy essentially made it unlikely that a project like that could ever really get financed. It was a big project. Um, we've uh, been, been told that they plan to come back with a smaller version project but similar to uh, the Trinity application you have to go to the planning board and do a whole um, case. Um, but uh, we haven't seen anything yet, haven't filed anything yet. But you hear it, they may be coming back at some point. No, the, 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 the township's no it wasn't Supreme Court, it was a, it was a township's denial of the project was overturned. The township had turned down the project. And it was overturned. That was overturned. Mm -hmm. the there were other ancillary lawsuits too that actually did go to the Supreme Court. There were multiple lawsuits and about 10 plus years of litigation. So you're saying they don't have approval at the moment? They couldn't have right. right now? Well, they. Well, um, realistically. realistically, no. Uh, they don't have any approvals. To approve. they, they still have to go to the planning board and get approved right. the latest version of whatever they, they plan to do. I'm more Technically, they'd have to go through the planning board. Go through the planning board process if they wanted to build it. Jerry, did you want to say something? Uh, you, are you finished? Okay. I, I just wanted to point one thing out, and it's extraordinarily difficult to sit here because the five of us, by the very nature of our position, have opinions, and we cannot we cannot utter any any sound make a motion stating a position one way or another because whatever happens at the planning board whether it is approved or not i guarantee you an attorney will get transcripts of these meetings where it was brought up and will be reviewed for anything we may say to be used for or against whoever is bringing you know the challenge so i just want to make that very clear that because we do not answer something or or sit here sort of motionless is purposeful to protect you, to protect us, and to protect the town from any sort of uh, problems that would arise from us letting our emotions get the best of us and saying, yeah, we feel this way or that way. And I just, it's very difficult, and believe me, I think in the inside you can see the, the tsunami that's going on inside of each one of us, uh, you get quite a different picture. But I just wanted to make sure everybody's aware that we legally really cannot say anything or even you know sort of give a nod one way or the other and that's the reason you get five statues up here thank you man. i actually think uh committeeman i think that was part of the basis to the overturning of the lawsuit to the previous committee if i'm yeah. not mistaken so yeah. to your to your point sir okay i think you can call on you again but stay to the meeting okay the general question is there anyone else who'd like to speak Okay, seeing no other members of the public, I hope to close public portion and adjourn. Second. Adjournment, uh, committee to your right? Yes. Committee in the South? Yes. Committee in Sharperberger? Yes. Deputy Mayor of San Marino? Yes. Mayor Murray? Yes.